Hello everyone, welcome to the shop and welcome to another episode of Home Shop Tips. Today I'm going to show you my electrolysis tank that I made a while ago to remove rust from a couple parts I had. It's a pretty simple device. Basically it uses the flow of electrical current to break off the rust particles from your from your part. And what it basically is, it, is it's electrolysis and you're turning water which is, this is water mixed with something else, turning water into hydrogen and oxygen, which you've probably done in the science class before. But when the little bubble of, I can't remember if it's hydrogen or oxygen coming off, off of this part, but when that bubble pops off, it, it has some force to it, and it breaks off a little flake of rust. And uh, I, I'm, I'm probably not explaining it perfectly well, but you can go online and find other websites that will explain it better than I can. But I'll show you the basic components of my electrolysis tank. I'll start with the power supply, which is just a simple battery charger. And the next thing along the line, you might not need this, but I have a battery, and that's because my battery charger has some safety feature where it doesn't allow any current flow unless there's a battery attached to the leads. And I guess that's to prevent sparking and arcing if you accidentally touch the positive and negative clamps together. So in order to bypass that safety, I hook the leads from the power supply onto a battery. Then from the battery, I go to my electrolysis tank, which I made out of a five gallon bucket. If you have really big parts that you need to de-rust, uh, you could even use a, a, um, a watering tank for horses, it's one of those big plastic watering tanks. And in it I have water mixed with, I can't remember what it's called, washing soda. I have it back here. Arm & Hammer Super Washing Soda. You can also use baking soda, which is sodium bicarbonate. This is something else. I forget what the chemical name is. But that increases, I believe it increases the electrical conductivity of the water. So anyway, you have the tank filled with water mixed with the washing soda. I got that for, you know, like $2.50 or something. And then you need, uh, let's see, anodes, I believe. The anode is the positive terminal. These strips that I have lining the tank are the anodes. They're just uh, strips of sheet metal. Use steel. Don't use stainless or aluminum or anything. Use steel. I think if you use stainless, it makes some harmful chemical byproduct when in the fluid or something. I don't quite remember, but use just use steel, sheet metal. I used some sheet metal and you'll be fine. And I had some uh, grounding wire cable, hefty nice cable, that I attached to each one of the strips. The, each one of these bolts attaches to a strip. So all of these strips are connected via this, this wire. And you can see there is the positive clamp connected to that, which is the cathode. And the anode, wait a minute, is cathode positive or negative? I can't remember. The red one, the positive one, is connected to the strips. And then the negative is connected to this cable, which I have hooked up to the negative clamp and that is connected to the part which is submerged but you may be able to see you can see see it over there you can hopefully see it bubbling that's the uh, the gas is given off by the reaction so the water's gotten pretty dirty with all the use I've given it but that's, that's the basic circuit. So once again, we have power coming from the power supply and uh, to the battery. I have positive to the positive terminal and negative to the negative terminal. The negative 
coming out and then positive this is just electrical tape but a positive coming out and the only reason I have the battery here is to bypass the safety on the power supply if you have a power supply without a safety uh, you don't need a battery and then positive and negative wires I have going here and up from the positive attached to the strips and the negative you attach your part and you know that you have uh, attached it backwards if more bubbles are coming off of the strips than the part and also you'll notice that your strips are very clean while your part while your part gets dirtier then you just reverse the polarity and it'll be fine so you can see it bubbling away there I just have a piece of scrap metal in there I set up I've had it running for oh maybe five or ten minutes and I'm going to shut off my power supply and see if it is whoops that's not off I'm not unplug it that's definitely off and now I'm going to unhook positive and negative because I still have the battery attached and the battery will supply a little bit of juice now let's see what the part looks like nothing very exciting actually like I said I've only had it running for a couple minutes but you can see on the end of the part it's slightly blackish and when you pull the when you pull the metal out let me see if I can uh, set up the camera here and uh, get a get a wire brush to this because when you when you pull it out it's not going to be shiny clean it will be blackish or grayish but the rust flakes themselves will be removed and you'll be down to more or less bare metal and also another good feature is that when you get to bare metal the process will stop it will not remove any more material so that did a little bit you can see a, a little bit of shininess coming through the black there. Um, unfortunately, I, I uh, should have left it in longer to show you what kind of difference it makes. But your part will be black. It won't be perfectly shiny. and You need to follow up with wire brushing, some sanding. But if you have a heavily pitted part or lots of flaky rust, it's, this is definitely a good method to try to get up to remove the majority of that material so that's it in a nutshell I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you uh, are able to de-rust some parts that you've you've had lying around this definitely has come in handy for me um, I'm about to, uh, the reason I pulled it out and I decided to do a movie on it is because on one of my chainsaws my uh, Reed Prentice Craftsman 1200B, you uh, might have seen some videos I've done of it. It has a very badly rusted chain, so I'm about to fold the chain up so it fits inside here without touching these strips and uh, dunk it in there and let it cook for a couple hours and hopefully that'll get a lot of rust off. As it is right now, I have it sitting in a bucket. Actually, that bucket right over there, that's filled with diesel fuel and gasoline and and uh, whatever else I had lying around that I poured in there and I just, I'm just trying to soak it to free it up but I want to remove a lot of the surface rust and it's a lot easier to let electricity do it than to go at it with a wire brush so pretty simple pretty easy to construct it only took me uh, you know maybe an hour to put together and a couple dollars definitely a good tool to have around and what I like about using the five gallon bucket as long as your parts are small enough whoops, you got a lid or at least if you use a uh, the five gallon bucket with a lid compound bucket or this is a uh, tractor tractor oil bucket 
and you can uh, pop the lid on it and you can store it keep it out of the way the one uh, safety concern that you want to watch out for is like I said before this is essentially electrolysis of water which means that you're producing hydrogen and oxygen and as we know from the Hindenburg hydrogen is extremely flammable so it's producing all these gases and if you do it inside a shop like I am here you really want to watch out no sparks or if you run it for a while in a enclosed space you don't want too much of the gas to uh, to build up and say one spark from a battery or one of these bad connections I've made or from the power supply itself one little spark could ignite it so either do this outside or a well ventilated area or do it for a short periods of time but that's it I hope this helps some of you guys out there and uh, as always come back for more and uh, so long for now